Using a limited palette of three primary colors is a simple and effective way to learn color mixing. To paint this still life, I use naphthol red, cadmium free yellow light, ultramarine blue, and white, which is also a blue. Using just these colors, I was able to mix a full value range of secondary and tertiary colors that capture the light and beauty in this still life. I like the idea of a warm underpainting that would peek through the final work. So I mixed up this burnt sienna using the red, yellow, and blue, but no white. I applied a thin wash all over the board and constructed the drawing by adding paint and wiping it out. I keep moving the paint around until I get the drawing and values in place. This wash dries quickly, which allows me to apply the thicker paint right away. I like to pre-mix my palette by identifying the value and saturation range of my subject and then translating that to my palette. I begin mixing the color value that's easiest to identify. In this case, it's the highlight on the white pot. The highlight is the lightest light and has a yellow hue, so I just add enough yellow into some white so that it colors the white but doesn't darken it. Now to make the highlight show up, the surrounding area needs to be darker. I identify the colors in the light of the pot as reddish, purplish, and greenish, and a half step darker than the highlight. So I mix up three piles of those color values. The cloth, background, plum, and cup are similar in value, and will create the contrast needed to make the light of the pot the focal point. By mixing these as mid-tone, I still have room to go darker in the deep shadows under the pot and the oranges. The purest, most saturated color in the still life is the orange. I use lots of yellow and a little red to make the light of the orange and then add in more red to darken the mixture for the shadow. I continue mixing the major puddles of color values by comparing them to each other. This is just my initial start, and I will continue to mix and shift the colors as I paint. I begin the painting by repeating what I did on the palette. I lay in the lights and then paint the surrounding midtones to check the contrast. I'm painting the relationships like a jigsaw puzzle, seeing how one color value fits into the next. You can see from the palette how I shift off of my initial decisions, mixing along the edges of the colors for comparison. As I progress, I add in some darker values, and at one point I turn the painting upside down. This helps me to paint the bottom edge of the canvas, and it gives me a different perspective to critique my progress. I decide to leave the stripes off of the pot. I don't think they add to the composition. Remember that you are the boss of your painting and never feel like you have to copy everything that's in front of you. From three primary colors in white to my initial mixtures, you can see the changes as the painting progresses. By mixing along the edges of the puddles, I can compare subtle shifts in value and color to my original decisions. One thing to notice is how the palette looks like the painting. If your palette looks good, your painting stands a better chance of looking good, too. In the final stages of the painting, I use a smaller brush to add details, and then use a clean dry brush to soften edges. I continue until the painting says what it needs to and is finished. The limited palette of three primary colors allowed me to mix a full value range, as well as a range of secondary and tertiary colors. Because there were only three colors, it simplified the process and helped create a painting that is full of light and color harmony. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'd like more in-depth art lessons, please visit my Patreon site, where for $5 a month, you can get lessons in the form of videos, blogs, handouts, and plus, you get your art questions answered. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.